fish diet. Well, I'll tell you about Big Sur. Yeah, all right now. She need love too now. <laughs> hey, how Big Alice doing? What? How's Big Alice? She's doing great. She, she's doing good? Yeah. yeah. So you still take her out for steak and potatoes? Yeah, that's what's up when you buy the buffalo wings. She still give you a good job. <laughs> hey, real quick, I'm going to crack a quick joke. All right. You not a dry? Yeah. I bet you I can prove you wrong. All right. Spell spot three times out loud. S-P-O-T. 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 Would you go at a green light? Stop. You go, dumbass. Put me in Got him! <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, I want you to spell fork three times. F-O-R-K, F-O-R-K, F-O-R-K. What do you soup with? that's yours, you get the big one, or the A spoon. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Almost had me. I was going to say yeah, yeah. fork. All right, uh, so I guess we'll first start out, state your name, spell it, and just tell us what you My name is Terry yourself. Felder, um, T-E-R-Y-F-E-L-D-E-R. Um, right now, I'm... Somewhat unemployed. I work for a temp agency, Labor Ready on uh, Franklin Ave. I'm homeless, temporarily homeless. I've been homeless for about a month now. Um, off the record, on the record, I'm a pothead. I love smoking pot. I'll put it out there. That's me. I can tell you. You can tell by my eyes right now. But um, yeah, um, you know. But uh, you know, I like to work. You know. Uh, I used to have a drug addiction to crack cocaine. You know, been six years clean off that. Thank God. Come from a good, good family, beautiful family. Moral values. I love my family. I love my parents. They beautiful, beautiful family. You know, I've uh, sold drugs, been locked up, uh, never been shot at. I'm not the type to start trouble. I'm a humble dude. I mean, they can tell you I, I like to crack jokes. I'm a, you know, good spirited dude. You know, you know, it takes a lot for me to get out my character. Meaning, uh, get mad and you know, lashing out loud, whatever. But uh, I'm a good guy, you know. I'm just trying to find work right now. Uh, I come down here, I eat. Thank God for this place right here, you know. Sometimes, cause it gets rough for me when, like, the last week there's been no work at labor, right? so you know I'm struggling right now. But, you know, it's like you know I'm in a shelter, I'm in a shelter, Hungerford, uh, the Immaculate Conception. And, I get up every morning at 2, at 2.15, and I'm out the door by a quarter to three to get the labor ready. And they open up at five o'clock, but the way they work, first come, first serve. So I try to be number one on the list so that if there's one job that day, I get it. But for the last week, it's been no jobs. No jobs at all. So, um, I have a girlfriend, she's in a program right now. She'll be home on the ninth, so. She's from Toronto. She wants to come out here and go and get in the shelter and like start from scratch with me and do it together. So you know, I hope everything goes well. She has an addiction. She's a, a heroin addict, you know. So and I, it's like I told her, uh, you know, being out here, you fresh out of program. It's not good it's out here, you know. But you know, she's gonna go to labor ready to fill out an application and you know go out there with me. And what we're gonna do is like we'll leave like. We leave the shelter like about two in the morning. We'll come straight over here and sign up over here because upstairs they got rooms up here, you know, and they, they you pay your rent by your income. So basically that's what we're trying to do and definitely make it an apartment together, you know. But uh, yeah, that's me, Terry Felt. <laughs> uh, so how did you, uh, I mean, what's the environment like? like here, just hanging out here, um, and what kind of things do they do to kind of help you along? Well, you know, Lynn and uh, the other staff, they do help out, you know, with things that you need. Um, the environment, the environment is good, but you got some bad apples, you know, that's, you know, you got one, a couple of individuals that spill things, but other than that, this is a good place to be, you know? The people here are good, the staff here are good, you know? They do help out, it's like Friday, I had called my job, because I just lost, I had an Android, a tough phone, tough Android, and I lost it two weeks ago. And um, so since then, I've come here to use a phone call with my job, and I called my job Friday, and I needed a pair of black slacks and a white t-shirt, and I, with the Alex, and I'm like, yo, listen, I, I need a, a black slacks and a white t-shirt. He took me in the back, I got some black footwords and a white t-shirt, and I was able to get six hours on Saturday, so they do help out, you know? They, whatever they can do for you, man, 
they will help up, but if they see that you're the type that's about the BS and not trying to prove you, I mean, not prove yourself, but uplift yourself and better yourself, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me for that. They're not gonna waste their time with you, you know? And they see that, you know, every day I get up, I go to work, and if there's no work, I come and chill here, you know? I chill here till like two o'clock, then I go up to Hungerford and wait in line for the shelter, you know, to get into the shelter and stuff, but other than that, that's what it is. So what are the what are some of the job opportunities that you've you've uh, been going for lately? Uh, hmm, jobs. Lately, well, I just did one last Wednesday. That was the only day I worked. Fourteen hours unloading a truck. This truck, the driver, he was from somewhere way upstate New York, and a restaurant closed down. So we had to go all the way to Rhode Island to that restaurant. Then we had to go to Norwich to that restaurant. Then we had to go to Mystic to that restaurant. And then we had to take everything and put it on the 53 foot. 14 hours. So he paid us seven hours on the books and he gave us seven hours off the books to keep cash in our pocket. Took us to his hotel room, had a drink with us, smoked weed with us. It was a good day. Yeah, but, um, I, I do, I got, you know, I know a lot. I know a lot. I know a lot of trades. A little bit of carpentry. One thing about me though, because you know I'm half Jamaican, my father's Jamaican, he's a Rastafarian, and you know they believe in planting and that lands, horticulture stuff. So, landscaping and horticulture, that's my thing. I love to do it, that's my favorite job to do. Um, I like that, I love to cook, and I like driving trucks, but I don't have my CDLs. But yeah, that's it. But I, 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 know, every, I know a little bit of everything. Working for labor, and you get experience to a lot of different trades. So. So you said you want to be driving trucks. How would you go yeah. about that? Well, I would have to go to CDL school and get my CDLs. But mm -hmm. my uncle has his own trucking company, and uh, I was on the road when I was like, I was like, was I married yet? No, I wasn't married. Yeah, no, I was married. I was like 18, 19. And um, he drive, he hauls produce. So I used to drive from like, the furthest I went was the bottom of South Carolina. No, Florida. I went to Florida. Somewhere in Florida. I was somewhere in Florida, and the furthest I went from Florida to Maine. And this is it's good money, but it's hard work. You know? It's hard work. And the reason why I can't drive now because in Virginia they got the way station, and I didn't have my license, and I was like 1,500 pounds over on my tail end. So they made me. I had little crates of oranges, tangerines. I had to move like 2,500 of the cases up to the front of the truck. And then the state trooper would not let me drive my truck off the uh, way station property. So I had to pay another truck $500 just to take me, move me from here to probably where the first store at right there on Park Street. Yeah, but other than that, life is good. Life is good. Life is good. I have not too much to complain. Keeping a positive attitude. Yeah, I try to do that to. all the time. Got to, regardless if you're having a bad day yep. or what, man. You know, you gotta stay positive, man. You know, and other people are gonna feed off that positivity, exactly. and then it's gonna come right back to you. Yeah, so. exactly. It's like if I see you having a bad day, I come over and crack a joke and make you smile. If I put a smile yeah. on your face and make yeah. you laugh, that's that makes me happy. For I could just day. tell you walking in the room. I was like, yeah, yeah, man. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I like to have fun, man. You know. There's no need to be sad, man. Exactly. You know, I mean, things happen. I don't say things. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna just be me. Shit happens. Get over it. Pick yourself up. Yep. It gets better. You know what I mean? That's why I never. Once in the blue, you'll probably catch me in my little slump. Mm, that's because I ain't smoking medication. I ain't gonna lie. When I ain't got no medication to smoke, I'm. Mm, mm. Yeah. That's easy though. Huh? Other than that, life is good. Tired as hell. <laughs> like, yeah, like I said, I get up every morning. It's like living in a shelter, it's hard to go to sleep. So I try, I get in bed by 8, and I try to be asleep by 10, the latest, and uh, sometimes it don't happen. You know? So, like, yesterday, I slept two hours. Last night, I didn't sleep at all. So, I'm kind of tired today. Ain't got no work today. 
that kind of like not got me down, but it's like, damn, man, you know? Does that affect going out and find some work or doing work because you're so tired? Huh? Does that affect getting work and doing work? Cause you're not nah, the tired I am, the more, the more the better performance I am, you know? And like, it's like, you know, my supervisor and labor, they know I smoke weed, you know? And sometimes if it's a serious job, he be like, yo, did you have some medication? I'm like, yeah, he's like, okay, we're gonna go. Cause you know, I like doing heavy stuff. I don't like, I like the job that's going to constantly keep me busy for the whole day out. I don't like the call stand I don't like that, you know what I mean? So when it's like a loading job, load, unloading, unloading a loading truck, that's what I like to do. I like dealing with heavy stuff. Yeah, so, you know, just let me go get my medication and let's go. I was a track man for two years. Yeah, I actually, I, I did that for the labor ready in Bristol, and it was cool, but I did it, it was during the snow, it was snowing and, and raining at the same time. It was like yeah. 18 degrees, yeah. my hands was freezing, my foot was freezing, I was soaking wet, but yeah, trash, doing trash, I can see myself doing that, because I found this lady threw away a china set. And, um, I took it home to my mom, and my mom cleaned it up, and she was like, hold up, I think this is real silver. So she took it and had it appraised. It was a set, and she got it appraised. It was worth $750, because it was an antique set. So she don't even use it. She got it sitting up in her little pantry table mm -hmm. on display. Yeah. Two nephews, beautiful, beautiful nephews, very smart in school, straight A students. My nephew Tyshawn, he will be, he will make it to the NBA. He's that nasty. He will make it to the NBA. He gives all his credit to who? Uncle T. Yes, sir. Yeah, he gives me all the credit because when he was little, thank you. When he was little, it's like my family. I come from a working family, so it's like. My nephew really didn't have too many people to take him out and play with him, just that and the third. So I used to come by, spend time with him, you know, spend time with him, take him out and play basketball. I used to use the, the shopping carts down in our garage and they play basketball with him. I taught him how to ride a bike. Um, taught him how to ride a bike, basketball, baseball. I'm his favorite uncle. Every time he like they win a game and they give him the microphone, he don't shout. He don't shout out my grandmother. He don't shout out my grand. I mean, he don't shout out my mother. He don't shout out my father. He don't shout out his mother. He shouts out his uncle T. Yeah. Uncle T, I love you, man. Thanks. Yes, sir. So when he get to the NBA, I told him, I said, Hey, when you get to the NBA, I want to hear. I want to hear. Uncle T, thanks. Love you. Yeah, but, yeah. My nephews, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of them because. When our upcoming, you know, come from the projects, five kids, two bedrooms, and uh, now my, you know, my mother, she gave her life to God like damn, 40 years ago, maybe more time than that. And when she did that, she went to school, got her PhD, ASD, all that stuff, and she got real educated. And now my mother, and father, man, they they sit lovely financially. They sit lovely. Uh, now it's like all the things my mother told me don't do, and the situation I'm in now with felonies, being incarcerated, can't get good jobs because of that, I sit back and be like, damn, man, on days like this, like when there's no job, and I'm like, fuck, man, if I didn't listen to my mother when I was young, I wouldn't be in the situation I'm in now, like, and it's like kicking myself in the ass, you know, but hey, it's spilled milk, I'll cry with it, pick yourself up and move on, you know, that's the way I see it. But um, yeah, but anyway, they come, you know, they they got everything, and I'm, you know, we didn't have much, you know, coming up, but them little man, excuse me, them little brats, spoiled brats, man, they get anything they want, man, little spoiled brats, them little, ooh, I hate them little things, they spoil little, any little thing they want, they get, any little thing they want, they get. Tashon, he's 16. He getting an ultimate. He getting his mom's car. My sister's getting ready to buy a Denali, so she's giving him a 2008 ultimate. I mean, he's, he's, you know, they good kids. They deserve. They deserve everything they get. I can't lie. You know, they don't play in the streets. They don't hang out in the streets. You know, very educated, straight A students. You know, so you know, they good kids. You know, 
They deserve it. I can't, I gotta stop hating. I'm hating. That's the hate of blood, you know? But they deserve it. You know, they're good kids. All the questions I got for you now. All right. So now you're technically off the record. 